thanks for gardening with me. I'm Melissa and today I want to ask you, does your front door pop? So today's video is a little bit more about decorating than it is about gardening, um, but I think that it all ties in together. Everything that we do to bring our personality to our home um, is just so important. So many times I see people that have the front door the same exact color of their house. What you want is you want people to be drawn to your front door. So you want your, your front door to be a color that represents you. It's a, a color that you like, a color that makes you feel good. You want your front door to be inviting. You want it to represent who you are so that when people are coming up to your house, they get an idea of who you are before they even open the front door. Um, and a very, very easy way to do that is with a little teeny quart size can of paint that costs a couple dollars. Um, you can take your door off the hinges and paint it, but it's just as easy on a nice day like today to open your door and paint it. You want to tape off your door handle, tape off the hinges. Um, that's so easy to do. And I do need to repaint my door. I love the color of it, but it's definitely seen its better day. <laughs> so um, I am going to refresh the paint on the door and I will show you how I do that with um, taping off all the handles and everything like that. But I really do think that it's important. You want your front door to be inviting. You want it to draw people in. My front porch, um, red is one of my favorite colors. I wouldn't say that my front porch is red. I would say it's more of a rust color. Um, and I just think that that's inviting and it, it ties into so much of the decor. I have furniture out here that pretty much matches my front door and then I have accent colors in the pillows. I try to tie that in uh, with some of my plants that are close to my front door. I do have some of the rust colors that are brought into um, the gardens with uh, coleus with um, red leaf maple, um, just different things like that that just kind of all tie in together. Now you go to the back of my house and there's no rust anywhere. It's blues, it's pinks, it's whites, it's completely different. And that's okay because you can't see the front yard when you're in the backyard and vice versa. So um, you can have a little bit of different personality and um, just have a little bit of fun with it. But one of the biggest ways that you can attract attention show some personality and give a destination to your front door is to change your front door color. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So I did already tape up my lock and my handle there. I recorded it, but my phone was only set on photo, so it didn't record. So I'm not gonna take that off and retape it. I'll try to give you a really close up view of how I do this. So I'll take my tape and fold it over on itself and I can line up the edges so I can make sure that I have a nice straight line. So I have a nice straight line there. And then I put that on my piece that I'll be painting because otherwise it's really hard to get it perfectly lined up on the edge. And as you can see with this door, I didn't paint the inside of it the last time that I painted. I think I used a spray paint. I think I put it up on a um, horse and spray painted it in the front yard. Um, but not really thrilled about the texture of that. So uh, this time I am just gonna use a brush, but I'm gonna use a sponge brush. And that taping off is a step that a lot of people will just bypass because they just don't want to mess with it. But it just takes an extra minute. That little bit of extra effort really makes a huge difference in the long run because you don't want to have paint on your hinges. It just does not look good. So there we are. I am going to wash down my door, dry it off, and it'll be ready for paint. And I think somebody wants in. Why do you have dirt in your mouth? 
So wiping down the door might be another one of those things that you think that you can just bypass, but if you have dirt on the door at all, it can affect how the paint adheres to it. So you want a nice even coat. So you definitely want to uh, wash it thoroughly and let it dry. So one of the final things in prep is to put a tarp down. I cannot tell you how many times I have not put a tarp down when I've painted and I end up cleaning up paint splotches from all over the floor. So learn from my mistakes and put a tarp down. We got these from the dollar store, a couple of them. I think there was two in each pack for a dollar. So you can't beat that. And I'm sure we can reuse it over and over again. Um, the paint that I'm using is, um, you can see that. It's HGTV Home and Sherman Williams um, Showcase Paint, um, let's see, Stain Blocking and Paint and Primer. Stays clean longer, advanced stain and scrub resistant, one coat coverage guaranteed. They all say that. It's never one coat, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm definitely freaking out a little bit. <laughs> this is not what the red looked like in the store. And then they have cushions there that we have and I actually put the um, color swatch next to the cushions just to make sure that it was gonna kinda go. I knew it was a little more red, but woo, that's red. So we'll see how this goes. So what I'm going to do, since this is a four panel door, is I take a sponge brush and I go through the creases first. And then I'm going to try to use my roller and see if I can get the rest with a roller. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but man, it sure would make life a lot easier. Ooh, this is red. Definitely a lot more red than what I had on here before. Don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but don't be afraid when you put your first coat on because paint always dries darker. And if I absolutely hate it, I can always paint over it. I've never been afraid of paint color, ever. There's no reason to. I mean, it takes a little bit of time and energy, but it doesn't take a whole lot of money. And um, it's not permanent. You can always paint over something if you don't like it. So it turns out I don't have a roller, so I'm gonna try these brushes and see if they leave brush strokes or not. Um, and if they do, then I'll just run up to the store and get a roller. paint on something don't think oh I'll go back and get it later stop what you're doing and clean it up now because it's just as simple as wiping it off now whereas if you wait you're gonna have to go back and scrub and uh, you might need the chemicals to get it off you don't want that
So I would say the first coat is done. It is dark, it is drying a little darker. So it's not quite as scary, but it is red. <laughs> so hopefully I like it. And then as far as the um the lines with the paintbrush go, I think what I'm gonna do is put another coat on it with a paintbrush and then see if the lines have faded because a lot of times when it dries, it smooths out. And if I can still see a lot of the lines, I might just run up to the store and grab a roller or try to use the sponge brush. But I think that would take forever. I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> so um, I'll see you in a little bit for round two. So that's it. This project is all finished. I love how it turned out. I think it looks crisp and clean. It is a little brighter, a little more red than what I had originally thought it was going to be, but I like it. And if I get to next year and decide that I want to change the color, I can do that for $10, $15, $20, depending on how expensive your paint is. I think this was about $15 at Lowe's. Um, I really like it. I think it looks good. I think it's going to hold up really well to the dogs coming in and out. But um, I just want to thank you so much for gardening with me. And I hope that this inspires you to get out there and paint your front door and give your front door a pop. <laughs>